Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought it would be really good to do a sleeping tips video because I haven't done a kind of like tips or any video like that in a really long time and I do have a few tips that I have discovered along my way of parenthood that have helped me in getting Oliver to not only sleep through the night but to help him fall asleep easier at night too. So Oliver doesn't fall asleep in his cot every night, he actually falls asleep in my arms downstairs. So what happens is he has his last bottle after the day and usually falls asleep during that bottle. So I'm going to get straight into it. My very first tip today is to stick to a routine. It is so, so important to keep them in their routines and I finally understand now when I was out as a kid or as a teenager and I'd hear parents talking about you know their kids aren't in routine or oh my god it's screwing up their routine and I'd kind of just think like okay but it's just a routine like it can't really have that much effect right but trust me it has a massive massive effect and obviously babies can't tell and toddlers can't tell the time but they know what order things happen in and if it's nighttime or daytime when it happens and they have kind of an idea that brings me to my second tip and that is to not let them have a late bedtime if you don't get your child to sleep in that first early window they'll go into an overtired mode where they actually get more hyped up. It's harder and harder to get them to fall asleep while they're in that hyped up stage when they're overtired and it's really difficult on the parents and on the child because the child's not getting good sleep and the parent's really stressed out and obviously tired as well. So that first window for me, I put Oliver to sleep at about seven o'clock or seven to 7.30 in that window somewhere. And I find that's a really good time. I used to put Oliver to bed at around 9.30 and 9 o'clock and I think that was too late. We used to have a lot of problems getting him to sleep and I'd be rocking him for half an hour trying to get him to sleep. But since I've brought it back, gradually brought it back to around 7 o'clock, he falls asleep so much easier. Tip three might seem obvious, but it is something that really does work. And that is trying to get them to wear themselves out during the day, trying to use up all their energy. I like, if I'm just going to be home with Oliver all day and not doing anything, I like to go to a park and let him crawl around on the grass. Um, obviously, if your child's walking around and running around, it's great to let them just use up that energy and wear themselves out a little bit. Have a bit of a play, even if you're just going shopping and they're just in the pram while I go shopping, I still feel like that outing wears them out. And I think it's so much better, even if you're just at home playing, play with them in a way that really sort of uses them to crawl and walk. I always find on days when I do a lot with Oliver, he is out. Like you can just tell he's so tired. And tip number four is I have decreased Oliver's naps from two a day to one a day. And I did this a few months ago and he really kind of did it on his own. He was just really, really fighting the morning nap or... If he had a morning nap, he really, really would fight the afternoon nap. So he goes down now at around 11 o'clock and sleeps until sometimes 1 o'clock, sometimes 12 o'clock, sometimes 12.30, depending on when he goes down, but it's never usually longer than two hours. Tip number five is when you're giving them dinner, I give Ollie his dinner at 5.30, which is a little bit early for me myself, but I know that it's really good for him and his routine. So I get his dinner ready at 5.30. Make sure it's a substantial meal and that they really are full. It's hard to know when a child is so full because they can't tell you. But what my child does is he will throw food and sort of whinge and try to take his bib off and that's when I know he's had enough, he's full. Tip number six is to bath them right before bedtime. And I feel like this is a big one for me too because our, our light had actually blown in our bathroom for some time, for months. And because we're renting, our real estate actually wouldn't fix it for months. So I would be bathing him during the day when I still had light in summer. And I struggled to get him to sleep at night because he wasn't relaxed enough. If I bath him right after his dinner, so this is probably around 6 o'clock, 6.30 now. I take him up for a bath. I put a couple of pumps of um, some calming sort of bath washing and I think I'm using a goat's milk one at the moment because of Ollie's eczema um, and he just has a play around in there with his toys for around 10 to 15 minutes I would say sometimes it's only five minutes if I'm rushed but I wash him and then I just sort of sit there and like uh, watch him while he has a bit of a play with his toys and I think that helps him wind down too he absolutely hates getting dressed out of the bath and absolutely hates getting out of the bath but once I do before I put his clothes on I give him an all-over rub with a moisturizer which is a a vino calming lotion i'll get it for you all right so this is what 
we use. So it is the Aveeno Calming Comfort Lotion and it's got lavender and vanilla. It has lavender and vanilla scented. I'm not sure if there's actually lavender in there. It doesn't actually say there's lavender in there. But I know the smell is coming for him. It gives kind of, it gives me a bit of hay fever, but what can you do? It really works. And this is really, really good for his eczema. I did have the blue one, which is really good as well. But this one just seems really good for nighttime. The smell just calms him down. I rub it all over his legs and his arms when he's not being cranky. And I can tell that this makes him feel really, you know, that just nice feeling after you've had a shower and you just feel really clean. So I think that's how this makes him feel. Another tip, and this might be a bit of a controversial topic, is to make the bed as cozy as possible if your child is old enough. Um, so Ollie started using a junior pillow a couple of months ago. It is recommended over one. Some people say um, not under two, but Ollie was so to sleeping in bed with me and he is very um, able to move freely, you know, I really do feel like it is safe, but it's personal preference. This really, really helped Oliver sleep through the night. It was just, you know, it's not a big pillow. The junior pillows are quite flat. Um, but when he was sleeping in bed with us, he would be using, like, if he was cut up to me, he would be, his head would be on the pillow. And I think he just got used to having his head up high. So when I'd put him into his cot, he knew straight away that he wasn't in bed with me and I couldn't kind of trick him. So I got a junior pillow and he literally started sleeping through the night pretty much straight after that. And I also have another little pillow to one side of his cot that's like a little novelty pillow. Um, it's a little cloud and on the other side is a little lamb toy, which I think makes him feel really safe and secure. And I know he is old enough to sort of get up and crawl around and move around himself. So I'm not too worried about that. If I was, I wouldn't do it. And he's also, another thing is make sure they're warm enough because I feel like since using a doona with Ollie, not a really heavy doona, like a baby doona with a flannelette sheet and that over the top, if I snug him, like tuck him in, he looks really, really snug and I feel like he just feels really cozy. In summer it was difficult because he only had a sheet and I feel like maybe the sheet wasn't as cozy and it was just a cotton sheet. So maybe in winter he just feels more cozy. I don't know, but that definitely worked for me. So I would definitely recommend giving that a go. Obviously you don't put a pillow or anything else in the cot unless you're comfortable with that. And I definitely wouldn't recommend putting anything in the cot with your baby if they're under one year old. And the last thing that I want to say is maybe, maybe this works. I don't know if this works, but maybe get a nightlight because I know that on nights when I leave the bathroom light on um, in the room next to Ollie um, is the bathroom. If I leave that light on, he tends to be able to put himself back to sleep when he wakes up. I think when he wakes up during the night and everything is pitch black, he kind of gets scared and freaks out a little bit. So maybe try a nightlight. I haven't actually tried a proper nightlight in his room. I've got um, this little hippo toy that sort of puts glowy stars on the roof and everything that my mum got him. but. That distracts him too much and is too exciting for him to look at. So maybe just something really dull and I hope that will work for you. I hope any of these tips actually work for you. The biggest, the biggest things that I would say is definitely the routine, the early bedtime and try raising your child's head a little bit and just making sure they're comfortable. That would be the main ones. Anyway, they definitely helped me and I've got Oliver sleeping through the night now. So I hope they help you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys very shortly. Bye!